Hey everybody, I'm Dr. Plasma and I like customizing. Today we're going to build a 9x9 piston elevator. It's going to have more steps, but it's going to be easier. Having another step lets us make the whole thing more symmetrical, and one of the steps is going to be really tiny. We're also going to debut a new way of triggering an observer. We are going to use a double piston extender. This is going to allow you to build an elevator that doesn't have the bottom elevators right up against the front of it. It'll make it a little bit more flexible in how you can design it. If you've never built one before, don't worry. We're going to use the really easy double piston extender. Let's get started. So dissecting a 9x9 elevator, we'll see we start with a basic piston elevator. We're going to have a little hat on top that's just going to be an observer with a slime block attaching it to a piston. And then we're going to have a crown on tier 3. And this is to make it as beautiful as possible. We're going to have it be like this. We're going to have a five block curve like this, holding three pistons. And we're going to hit both of these observers at the same time to make sure we push all three and don't worry about hitting the middle one twice. And the reason we want to do this is because of this, step four. These wing designs are some of the most compact ways of pushing lots of pistons. And we need 18 of them to be able to do a nine by nine. And so by doing six, we can just do, they're almost identical except for one block so that these can move over a little bit further from the pistons they're on top of. And you can see they're symmetrical. We're going to have two observers underneath each of them. So that's six total. So we actually, for the whole machine, have 11 observers, which is less than, say, our 8x8, which has 12. So we're actually using less observers this time. And finally, the slime block layer. The slime block layer is pretty easy to understand. On all of the front pistons, you're just going to go up two blocks and then a row of five. That's all you have to do. That'll be 7, and it'll push 5, and that's 12. On the back, you're going to have it not hit right here. So all you have to do is go over until you can go up. And that's it. Then you're going to have to add padding on the ones that reach out one so that they are 8 blocks total. And it's going to look like this. That's the padding, just those three blocks. It's going to be very easy to put together. All right, I'll give you another flyby, and let's get started on building it. So building a 9x9 is going to be very easy to remember. All you have to do, start as usual with our base piston elevator. We're going to add a little hat of three blocks on it, like this. And then we're going to add a crown shape of pistons. And then of course, we need to have some observers on this one as well. And that's tier three. Now tier four is going to be the following. The fourth tier will contain these. And then we need to put some observers on these. There's going to be six pistons on each, and there's going to be two observers on each. Sometimes it's easiest to put the observers down first on this. Be sure when you place an extra block like this that you get rid of it. And now one, two, three, four, five, six, one, two, three, four, five, six. One, two, three, four, five, six. And that's a piston elevator for a nine by nine. Let's add the slime blocks. You might think that's hard on an elevator that's even bigger than the last ones, but it's actually very easy. All you've got to do is repeatedly Put slime and honey on the front pistons, like so. And now you lead these forward, like so. And that costs you four blocks to get up to the top, which means that's eight blocks, which means you don't need to add any padding on it. That's seven. That's eight. That's eight. 
And you don't have to keep track of this, you just know there's seven on the ones where the piston sticks out further. So when we go to add our padding, it's going to be as easy as adding these three blocks right here, here, and here. You see how that lines up with those pistons. And now you've got a seven or nine, nine by nine elevator. It's just getting easier and easier as we get bigger instead of harder. We have another stage, so there's more moving parts to it. And it's going to make turning it on and off a little bit trickier. But now we are already ready to test it. So let's go ahead and put a barrier on top. We want to touch all of the sections of slime, so we do it over this overlap. And we are going to prime it like so. This one, this one, this one, this one, this one, this one. Now the challenge comes in on trying to hit both of these at the same exact time. There's not really an easy way to do it. My suggestion is that you go ahead and get yourself some pistons as if we're going to build the bottom trigger mechanism. We are going to put some like, it's probably not the easiest way to put those down, but we're just going to tap it like so. And so let's do that. We'll grab some redstone dust. We'll grab another block of some sort. Um, actually, we want to hit them with an observer if we're going to prime it. Because it'll hit it a second time. We want it to just hit it once. Forgive me. But that's just going to go boop. And, um, actually, let's just do this. We're going to touch this redstone down, dust down. And that will give us what we want. It'll trigger both one time. This is just temporary to show you how to do it if you really are insistent on doing it before we build the bottom. Ready? Boop. That's all there is to it. You just have to touch them both at the same time. And now we have the third one. And then we should be able to launch it like so. Ready? And it works. You've got a nine by nine. And we can pull it back down the same way we'd pull any other down. So now, let's start building the bottom uh, trigger. We'll build the bottom trigger and then we will do the top clasp. So to build the bottom clasp, we're going to start with the top layer as we always do. And what you're going to want to do is put some underneath these observers. And we're going to run it across and put some under these observers. Straightforward, right? So in order to hit the ones in the middle, we don't want to get too close. So what we're going to do is we're going to put a piston like so. I'm going to feed some redstone into that piston. The smartest way to do that is to actually lead it like so. And you can do the same thing over here. like so. Notice that I'm avoiding, as always, putting something directly in front of the observer because we don't want to accidentally trigger it yet. And so a smart way to put it underneath is to just get them out of the way. The reason why it's a smart way to do it is because you can actually put them right back by looking at the redstone dust. Let's do the same thing on the other side. That is going to be it for the first layer. Now the second layer, ironically, is above the first layer. The second layer 
is right here. We'll put that one above it like so. We need to wait three ticks between each layer. So let's have some redstone dust coming in and we will lead out some redstone dust like so. Let's say we were to put it right. We'll go ahead and put it right here. So I'm going to put an a repeater like this. And the reason why we are doing this will become clear in a second. We need to have this repeater and wait three ticks before doing this one and wait another three ticks before doing layer three. So rather than putting two repeaters down there, we can simultaneously wait three ticks and then go down and go up. Now, putting this block here so these don't touch, we're doing layer two. Now layer three is right here. And so we are going to say hello to layer three, like so, waiting with three more ticks before we do that. And then finally, we are going to wait three more ticks and we are going to tell it to go. So let's connect this. And that should be all we need in order to run our 9x9. Nine nine. It looks complicated, but remember, it's mostly just redstone dust, and we need to say hello to these six facing downward, wait three ticks, these two facing forward, wait three ticks, and then this one. And wait three ticks, and then launch it. So it's four tiers, but it's actually pretty simple. I only need a little bit of items. Let's test it. It works. Now I've put the top on and added something decorative. Let's build the top clasp. So the top clasp is going to be grabbing it like the other ones do using sticky pistons. And we just happen to have a lot of sticky pistons now. You'll see in my hot bar, most of the things you're going to need. You're going to need 18 of these. And then to build the double piston extender, all you're going to need is going to be five repeaters and then two observers and two um, sticky pistons. Like that. That will grab it and make sure that there's 13 on each one so it stops. And this will invert them so that they stay by default, until we push a button. I'm curious what the fastest way is to place blocks in Minecraft. I feel like backing up is the fastest way to do it. Oh, I'm talking and not thinking about what I'm doing. There, and then we're going to put these down. And there's those 18. And I'm going to lower this down one and run it across. I just happen to like lowering it down one. It makes it easier to reach. And if you're worried about counting because you're building this underground, you want to just go ahead and put one here for good measure. You know that's 9, so that's 11. And as long as it's not 15 to get to the middle here, then you shouldn't have to worry too much. And we can just, towards the middle, put a button on. Now, in order to build that double piston extender, we're going to want to put it right here. Obviously, we don't want to touch this one yet, because that will cause it to move. We like it where it's at. So... Ordinarily, we'd want it here, but we don't want to overlap with this. The closest we can be is two blocks away right here. Now, what we're going to do is 
we're going to place two observers that are each looking this way. This one's looking this way, and this one's looking this way. And what we're going to do is we're going to put two sticky pistons right here. I don't want them to be there yet. We don't want to accidentally fire it. And we want something like this. What we're going to do is we're going to, after a single tick, we're going to fire. And this will push a block up against it. Let's get another color for our block. Let's say it's this color, just so you can see it more easily. And we're going to have 16 ticks. So I'm setting all of these to four. And that will do it. So if we wanted to fire this, we could do so now. We're going to put sticky pistons like that, and that will fire that forward and then pull it back before it becomes a problem. So now we need to just cause this to happen around the time that this happens. So because there's four layers now, it's actually taking longer for it to actually let go of this or need to let go of this. So by the time this layer moves, this one's come down, then this one's come down, then this one's come down, then this one's come down. It's like taking a while. And so what we want to do is we actually want to extend the time delay on each of these sides. We want to wait a little bit longer. And now what we will do is we will run from here and connect this up. Um, I think it would be smart to put a repeater say right here just because we're running out of signal right there one two three four five six seven eight nine ten eleven twelve yes and so around here I'll add one more all right you think that will do it let's find out One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen. Yep, it wouldn't reach if we wanted it to reach. I don't really want to put this here. I'm going to make an executive decision to not put it there. Instead, we're going to run a repeater like this. So rather than going out and away again, we will go like so. See, this is just another example that you can do it however you choose. Block that off. And see, now it's less ticks. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13. Now you've saved yourself an extra repeater. I don't know if you're limited on resources, but sometimes in survival you can be. Let's push the button and see if it goes. So what's going to happen is it's going to start to move. We will watch it closely. It's going to push this and touch that. It's going to move down. We're going to let go of it before it starts moving. You ready? Just in time. It works. And naturally, if you'd like, you can place anything aesthetic you want around the top of it. So it's going to be coming up into this frame. So this is your ground level. Your ground level is going to be right here. And now let's see if it comes to a stop when we go upward. You'll notice that it goes the same speed of all the other elevators. One of the cool things about this elevator design is it's fairly fast for the size. All right, I think that's all we've got time for today. I'm not gonna do any extra bells or whistles. We'll just keep it to that. Subscribe and leave a comment if you have any questions or things you want to see, any suggestions. And I'm going to start getting ready on the next video. Have a good rest of your day. Bye.